It's official. RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux is dropping support for Xorg server in place. They are putting Wayland at the forefront. Let's read through this announcement, talk about some of the main points, the pros and cons, as well as the overall community response. The post was made as Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 plans for Wayland and Xorg server. Hi everyone, I'm part of the engineering and product group focused on graphical displays and GPUs for RHEL. And I want to communicate a product and engineering decision we've recently made. I want to provide you with the context and, ex and explain the efforts we've made to the coming decision. This decision is the fact that they are fully dropping Xorg support in place of Wayland. We'll get to this in a moment, but I do want to discuss some of the main points here. The reasoning for the transition, which we're getting into, which is one, the reasoning for transition, how to support both stack still, how the advancements in Wayland have actually pushed the RHEL team to do this, why they made the decision, and some of the benefits that this will bring. So again, this will affect you if you're using a RHEL-based product, such as Oracle Linux, CentOS, Rocky Linux, and many others. The transition from the now 30-year-old X window system to a newer Wayland-based stack has been happening for the last 15 years or so. And Red Hat has been involved from the start over time. It became clear that X11 protocol and the Xorg server had fundamental issues that needed to be addressed. And Wayland was the solution. Today, Wayland has been recognized as a de facto windowing and display infrastructure solution. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the X system, it really has two main components, X11 and the X.org server, which are integral components for the GUI and Unix based systems like Linux. To dumb this down a bit, it's basically a component that goes between hardware like your GPU, CPU, and memory and translates it into things that you can actually see on your screen or GUI. So we'll put the X system here in the middle so it can act as an intermediary between the hardware and the graphical user interface. It does things like manage displays, handle input devices, render graphics on the screen. It's also responsible for initializing displays, managing windows, handling user input. It has been dominant for many decades now. So you can imagine how fundamental X11 and Xorg server have been in Linux and other operating systems. That's why this is such a big deal that RHEL is dropping this. Continuing on through the transition, Red Hat has been supporting both Xorg and Wayland stacks. This splits the time between upstream community having available support to new features and for fixing bugs. This here is a claim that since they have to support Xorg and Wayland, that it's a huge time split for their developers in maintaining both of these stacks or protocols. That being said that the community has been building new features and addressing gaps in Wayland while new development in Xorg server and X11 infrastructure have been winding down. While it is great that Wayland has been greatly enhanced, it does mean that there's increased maintenance burden in both stacks with lots of new work to maintain in Wayland and lots of older legacy work to maintain Xorg. This has been a difficult situation to sustain. Xorg is definitely mature at this point. So lots of updates include things like security updates, with patching and fixes for security and vulnerability mistakes and code. But as far as development goes, of course, to support newer hardware and newer ways of input or displaying graphical interfaces, that's where a majority of Xorg is. Whereas Wayland is a new, newer protocol, although mature in its own sense, there is still heavy development. So we can understand why it would be hard to split time between the two. As Wayland has advanced and become more capable, we've worked upstream and in internally with multiple hardware vendors, software vendors, customers, the visual effects industry, and upstream projects to understand and develop necessary projects to close the feature gap and even expand on the Wayland stack. I'm really proud of the work we've done. This includes efforts like leading parts of the efforts to support HDR, color management, leading X Wayland as the cornerstone for backwards compatibility with X11 clients, developing infrastructure to support modern remote desktop solutions, review and develop for a explicit sync support in the Wayland protocol and relevant projects created Liby to provide a solution for input emulation and capture co-led the Wakefield initiative to make open JDK work with X Wayland and dozens of other initiatives from the past and newer ones that are coming in the near future. So just because they're moving from Xorg, there is still X Wayland, which is another protocol that helps you support translating or interfacing any X system related functionality over to Wayland so it can be processed by a Wayland server. But of course that comes with its own risks, including things like compatibility issues and creating extra dependencies 
which can cause users to have a hard time transitioning. Anyways, we want to recognize the significant effort that all these organizations and individuals have made, especially the rest of the upstream community without whom the project would never be so mature. This effort gave us confidence to make Wayland default for most use cases in RHEL 8, followed up by the deprecating of Xorg Server in RHEL 9 and the intention of its removal in a future release. Earlier this year, 2023, as part of the RHEL 10 planning, we made a study to understand Wayland's status, not only from the infrastructure perspective, but also from an ecosystem perspective. The result of the evaluation is that while there are still some gaps in applications that need some level of adaptation, we believe that Wayland infrastructure and ecosystem are in good shape and we are on a good path to identify blockers to be resolved in RHEL 10 by the time RHEL 10 is out, plan to be released in the first half of 2025. So a big plan to make this full transition to Wayland, which is a big deal because RHEL runs so many other Linux distributions and is the base for them. Again, I mentioned these such as Rocky Linux, Alma Linux, CentOS, Oracle, and many more. We know all the drama that happened between these. And if you don't, you'll want to check out my videos on how RHEL decided to close source its repos months ago, which affected all of these other distributions. But in any sense, with this, we've decided to remove Xorg server and other X servers except XWayland from RHEL 10. And the following releases, XWayland should be able to handle most X11 clients that won't immediately be ported to Wayland. And if needed, our customers will be able to stay with RHEL 9 for its full life cycle while resolving the specifics needed for transitioning to the Wayland ecosystem. It is important to note that the Xorg server and X11 are not synonymous. X11 is a protocol that will continue to be supported through X Wayland, while the Xorg server is one of the implementations of the X11 protocol. Great distinction here. While we re recognize that the energy behind some of the distributions and Fedora spins moving forward, moving towards a similar future, this decision is limited to RHEL 10. So just know that Fedora is in the pipeline. And we recognize that Linux distributions have different needs and decision structures. And additionally, we are not aware of plans for a similar efforts in Fedora, nor are we involved in similar efforts besides sharing our knowledge. We have been working on gathering feedback, but we know we can't reach out to everyone directly. If you have any thoughts or questions about this, we invite you to the discussion we've set up in the customer portal. So speaking on some of the pros and cons here, some things I can think of for pros here is one, we get a modern solution, which can improve things like security, performance, and modern display features like HDR by using Wayland, hopefully industry support as companies keep coming out with software and hardware, things in the visual effects industry will need that modern solution to run modern hardware. Finally, focus development. Hopefully this does help somewhat with channeling developer resources into working on one protocol and server. Some of the cons here, are going to be the transitioning. There's going to be some applications that are going to require X11 that are old. So hopefully X Wayland will help with those. The other one is dependency. We don't want to get to a state where we're X Wayland dependent and can't actually make the full transition over to Wayland. This is going to take a lot of time. Again, many projects and software that are used in production have been deprecated entirely, which means it's hard to make the complete transition without getting rid of X Wayland, especially if RHEL wants to make a push for Wayland. Finally, as they've set up a discussion in the customer portal, we'll see what the community response is, because of course there's gonna be dissatisfaction amongst certain groups with the idea that RHEL is just further pushing their own ideas and narratives upon us and causing more fragmentation. Let's finish this up and talk about some of the community response. This decision allows us to focus our efforts on RHEL 10 solely on the modern stack and ecosystem. This means we will be able to tackle problems such as HDR, increased security setups and mixed low and high density displays or very high density displays, better GPU or display hot plugging, better gestures and scrolling and so on. We're confident that the Wayland will provide a solid platform and we're excited to work with the community and all of our partners and customers on building the future for Linux. So with all that being said, some of the community response here is excitement and support. Of course, people are excited with the modernization of Linux and moving forward with the modernization using the Wayland protocol. Two, we do have some speculations because there are already issues with specific applications, including OBS on Wayland, magnifying tools, which are significant because a lot of us use these. And finally, there are some more critical responses, including concerns for compatibility, especially when it comes to older software. 
And finally, some people mentioning diversibility, meaning they want the option of using Xorg and Wayland and not being forced into one or another since the X system is a mature display protocol that many people are used to. Why can't we have a subset that is still maintained in RHEL without actually using the resources for developers from RHEL? Maybe it becomes a community supported system and is still offered on RHEL. Anyways, overall big news coming out of RHEL. Definitely not the first big decision they've made this year. Let me know what your thoughts are below. I'd love to hear about it and if you enjoyed these types of videos, make sure to smash that like button for me. Subscribe below, hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.